You are listening to Love Your Practice with Dr. Laura Mock. I'm a general dentist, a practice owner, and a certified life coach. I teach women who own dental practices to lead with intention and literally fall in love with their businesses. Keep listening and you will see how learning to love your practice turns into loving your life too. Hey ladies, have you ever been in the middle of a clinical day when your assistant or your hygienist or someone who works for you does something that you want them to do a little bit different or maybe a lot different? Maybe you're a little bit irked or you're furious. Either way, I have felt the pain of being in the middle of taking care of humans and not being able to take the time right then and there to be the manager as well. And then what happens typically is we get to the end of the clinical day and we still haven't talked to that person about what we want them to do differently. And there's two reasons for that. One is because we really are busy. We really are. But the other one is that there's reasons our brain will give us not to have that conversation. It's uncomfortable. And we don't know exactly what we're going to say or how we're going to do it. We don't know how to have a conversation about positive changes that don't turn frustrating for the recipient or for us or both. And the thing is that I have had so many clients come to me and complain about this problem that I have actually made a course just for you, you female dental owners, and it doesn't cost anything at all. (laughs) I made it for you for free. It's deeper than I can go in just a podcast. So what I did was I put the whole course together in a a little online bundle. And all you do is text me to get the course. So I have this number set up. It's 66866, such an easy number to remember. And you just text the words, love your employees to the number, but you can't leave any spaces between the words or it won't come back. Correct. I don't know what you'll get if you leave a space, but so your autocorrect will want you to leave spaces there. You got to go back in and delete the spaces. Love your employees to 66866. And the next time someone does something in your practice that you want to change, you will have a very easy system that smooths out the speed bumps that our brain wants to put in place for us to not do the thing. But trust me, I have helped many women do this before. It's a tried and true plan. I use it myself, text the number, and then I'll see you in the course. Hey ladies, Dr. Laura Muck back here again today. I'm by myself today just to talk to you about how things are going in my practice. And I'm doing that because I am all up in my own feelings today. Ah, you hear that sigh? <laughs> this is a commiseration episode. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna walk you through how I'm processing a negative emotion. And I'm not gonna fix it today. I'm just going to let myself sit with these feelings that I'm having right now and demonstrate to you how I do it. I said, like, you know, because I do the dentisting thing and then I do the coaching thing. And, um, you know, I it, sometimes on the podcast, maybe I make it sound like it's a perfect process and it's not. It's full of emotions and, um, and real things, you know? So I'm going to give you some background and let you know how I'm working through it. I don't know how many of you listen to last time's episode, which is an excellent um, episode with Dr. Laura Brenner about why sometimes we get these disillusioned feelings about our practices and what we're doing. And um, if you haven't checked that one out, make sure you do. It's a really, really helpful episode, but it's funny because we were talking about side gigs and how I have a side gig, which is this coaching thing and how that coaching has made my practice so much better, which I really, truly do believe, but it's so ironic ladies, because (laughs) on the episode, and I wanted to take it back as soon as I said it, I said, you know, it's really made me a better leader and look at, I, here I am. I am not short staffed. And I'm in the middle of this, you know, the hygiene shortage and, and a dental team shortage. And, and we're all here. We're all this full team. 
And it wasn't maybe four days later that I got served a big giant slice of humble pie um, when my longest standing employee resigned. And she was, you know, she's a great person and her patients love her. And um, right after she resigned, I had to go in and do a big old cosmetic appointment that was already scheduled. And I had to run to the airport later that day. So I didn't have very much time to sit and process what I was feeling. But I just wanted to show you um, what I've been doing for myself in my mind. This is called metacognition, ladies. It's when we think about what we're thinking because otherwise what we're thinking becomes like a reality in our brains and our brains whose goal is to protect us ends up taking us for an emotional roller coaster that's um that ends up causing more harm than good in uh, in my personal opinion in a situation like this where we're leading and the brain is trying to tell me that my organism is at risk but it's not I'm not at risk right now. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at, I'm looking at all that. And the first step when we have something where, where um, we're feeling something unpleasant is to stop and do what I call putting on my curiosity goggles. So this looks like this. Oh shoot, I see I'm feeling blank and I fill in the blank for this day, I would say the emotion that I'm feeling is threatened. Um, and naming it is really helpful, right? And then I go, what am I thinking that is making me feel threatened? And also, what does feeling threatened feel like in my body? So I'm working on awareness when I do that in connection to me as an organism. I'm, I'm a copy of Homo sapiens right here. I've got my my muscles and my blood and my bones and my brain and it, and it's all here working and all of these feelings are inside of me because of the neurology and the hormones coursing through my body right and I'm so I'm just sitting there and recognizing that and for me when I feel threatened I feel like I might need to pounce um, I start going through in my mind all the reasons why it's true that I'm feeling threatened or why it's true that I am threatened is more accurate. So this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. And I'm making a list. And then simultaneously, I'm building walls. It's all happening inside of my organism, trying to protect me. And the walls are, um, they feel uh, hard. I guess is a word. It, it the hard walls make it harder for me to be open to listening to my remaining employees and listening to my patients, if that makes sense. So after I describe to myself what it feels like, then I do a thought download, which I've described before. But if you're new here, it's basically peeking inside of my brain to see what thoughts are sitting up in there. The reason it's helpful to do that is because when they're sitting there in our brain, we take them at face value as being factual. Even though many times they aren't facts, they're just interpretations that our brain is giving us. So for me, my thoughts go something like this. Patients are going to leave. Employees might leave. My practice is falling apart. The bank is going to call the loan. This is the end of my career. Like literally, it goes that quickly from, oh crap, I'm un, uh, I, I lost an employee to I suck at this. Everyone's going to talk about me and agree that I'm a terrible leader. And they're going to laugh at all the things that I'm trying to do. See, I'm the only person in my entire county um, of, I don't know how many people live in my county, maybe 300,000 people. I am the only dentist who is fee for service in that entire county. The trend of dropping dental insurance contracts has not come here to the Midwest as strongly as it is in urban areas. Uh, and I hope it will. 
I hope people will follow me, but you know, I have these thoughts. Oh my goodness. You know, I already have some patients leaving the practice right now and I'm okay with that. But then I think, okay. And layer on to that patients leaving to follow my employee who is now leaving. And then also in my thought download is all of these conversations that I'm imagining in my mind, conversations between like all of my employees who've ever left, right? They, they can get together and say, well, her jokes are stupid, or she's always trying these new things and we hate it. Or, um, you know, she, she aspires to do this thing, but she actually sucks at it. And then imagining dentists in the area talking about me or patients in the area going, can you believe she wants to get paid right when she does the work instead of letting our insurance reimburse her? And just all these conversations that I have. And it's very, very helpful for me to recognize that I actually have not heard a single conversation like the ones that I'm imagining. They're all in my mind. They feel terrible and, and they're there. And maybe those conversations are happening and maybe they're not. Frankly, I will probably never know because when I go home at night, I don't go into my patient's living rooms. I don't go home with my employees and listen in on what they're talking about. I just go home and make myself some dinner and maybe have a glass of wine and look out the window. And then I go to bed so that I can be ready to serve the patients who do want to see me in the morning. Anyway, back to the process. I've done this thought download. I've looked at my thoughts. And then what I'm going to do is with this thought download, I'm going to go back through the thoughts, made a list, a physical list. Like it's helpful. You can write yourself an email or you can write it on a piece of paper. You can dictate it, but I don't feel like that's the same. It's really helpful to physically look at the thoughts and you can ask yourself, this is what I'm doing right now. What on here could I call a fact? What is something that everybody in the whole world would agree actually happened? And there's only one, and that would be that this particular employee gave me her resignation letter. And I could add the date that is her, her last day of work. Everything else is just my mind processing the data. The reason that this is important is because I need to understand that my emotions at this point are coming from what's going on in my mind. And it's not wrong, it's not right, it simply is. It's the emotions that I have right now. And I wanna recognize that when I am feeling threatened, I'm not going to act like the boss I wanna be. Putting up walls doesn't give my employees the access to me that they deserve. Putting up walls doesn't leave me open to helping the humans in my area who need my help. And so coming up here sometime soon, I'll do a follow-up episode where I talk about how I want to look at things instead. But right now, what I want to tell you is that this process ends up taking time because <laughs> I can recognize that these are thoughts but I still get into the thoughts and get into feeling like they're real multiple times a day. So this is like something that I have to stick with every time I start to feel the negative feeling again. It might happen a hundred times. It might happen 150 times. It might happen a thousand times. But every time I recognize where my emotions are coming from, it takes away a little bit of the stab of the emotion. Does that make sense? Like I can say, oh yes, this is my body. This is what my body is doing to try to protect me. And I honor and respect my body. And I don't want to stay in feeling threatened forever. So I'm going to feel it. I'm going to describe it. I'm going to recognize where it's coming from. And I'm going to move on to something new as soon as I feel ready. And I will feel ready at some point soon. I don't know exactly when, but I will let you know how it goes. Thanks, ladies.
Thanks for listening to my podcast today. I'm Dr. Laura Mock signing out. Remember, if you want to take that free course on correcting your employees, text the words love your employees with no spaces to 66866. Thanks, ladies. See you next time. Thank you for listening to Love Your Practice with Dr. Laura Mock. I would love to meet you. To join our movement, find the Facebook group called Love Your Practice and request to join. If you can't find it, just send me a message and I'll add you. You'll find me there helping all of my ladies to fall in love with their businesses and have a better life.